Let's change glasses. <laughs> On behalf of Roger and Troy, I would like to thank you all for coming today to, to uh, witness this special occasion for them. Uh, also extend an invitation to um, the reception and dance at Mavers, which is in the Confederation Center. Uh, Queen and Grafton at 8 p.m. on till 2. And there'll be uh, some hors d'oeuvres and wine and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, there'll be a few hors d'oeuvres and wine inside after mm -hmm. we have the ceremony. And okay. What's <laughs> <laughs> that? And beer is sponsored by Moosehead. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Now all you have to do is get married. <laughs> What does it mean to be romantic? For many of us, the concept of romance conjures up visions of fancy gifts and flowers, extravagant evenings out on the town, or exotic vacations for two at a fantastic destination. However, the true meaning of romance transcends these stereotypes and offers us something much more precious and much more profound. The heart of romance is magic, the magic all of us have felt when we have been touched by love. Today, Edward Troy Perrault and Roger Lewis Sanderson will share that magic by performing vows in front of their family and friends. If you are in a loving relationship, you will find the most wonderful of all things in life is the discovery of another human being with whom your relationship has a growing depth beauty, delight, ecstasy, and joy of the, as the years increase. Troy and Roger have found these qualities in their relationship over the last 18 years. The moment you have love in your heart, you will discover the world is transformed. We all are shaped and fashioned by who and what we love. It is not where you go of what you do, it is who is by your side. A great marriage is not when the perfect couple comes together, it is when an imperfect couple learns to enjoy their differences. Love is a force more formidable than any other. It is invisible, it cannot be seen or measured, yet it is powerful enough to transform you in a moment and offer you more joy than material possessions could. A coward is incapable of exhibiting love it is a prerogative of the brain. The greatest weakness of most humans is their hesitancy to tell others how much they love them while they are still alive. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy, says the late Martin Luther King. Trouble is, part of your life, if you don't share it, you don't give the person who loves you the chance to love you enough. The good, the bad, hardships, joy, tragedy are all interwoven into one indescribable whole that one calls life. The marvelous richness of human experience would lose something of rewarding joy if there were no limitations to overcome. The hilltop hour would not be half so wonderful if there were no dark valleys to traverse. Infatuation is an instant desire. Love is a friendship that has caught fire. You must be friends before you can be lovers. You must be, take, love takes roots and grows one day at a time. Love is quiet understanding and the mature acceptance of imperfection. Miles do not separate. When you have loved as you have been loved, you will grow old beautifully. To love and be loved is to feel the sun from both sides. Infatuation lacks confidence. Love means trust. You are calm, secure, and unthreatened. Both feel trust, and this makes more trustworthy in return. 
Love makes you both better than you were before. Love takes off masks that we fear when we cannot live without and know who we cannot live within. The first duties of love are to listen and understand. Learn the wisdom of compromise. It is far better to bend a little than to break. Let your love be stronger than your hate or anger. Smile because it happened and laugh. We cannot really love anybody at whom we never laugh. Accept the things to which fate binds us and love the people with whom fate brings us. But do so with all your heart. There are two ways to live your life. One is through nothing is a miracle. The other is as though everything is a miracle. <coughs> Treasure the love you receive above all. It will last long after your goal and good health has vanished. Troy and Roger, may you live as long as you wish and love each other as long as you live. In his reflections of art living, Joseph Campbell said, Marriage is not a love affair, it is an ordeal. It is a religious exercise, a sacrament, the grace of participating in another life. If you go into marriage with a program, you will find it won't work. Successful marriage is leading innovative lives together, being open, non-programmed. It is a free fall, how you handle each new thing as it comes along. As a drop in oil on the sea, you must float, using intelligence and compassion to ride the waves. In 1 Corinthians 13, we learn that love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no records of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always preserves. Troy, would you please repeat after me? <laughs> I do solemnly swear, I do solemnly swear, that I do not know of any lawful impediment, that I do not know of any lawful impediment, why I, why I, Edward Troy Perot, Edward Troy Perot, may not be joined in matrimony, may not be joined in matrimony, to Roger Lewis Sanders, to Roger Lewis Sanders. Roger, can you please repeat after me? I do solemnly swear, I do solemnly swear, that I do not know of any lawful impediment, that I do not know of any lawful impediment. Why I, why I, Roger Lewis Sanderson, Roger Lewis Sanderson, may not be joined in matrimony, may not be joined in matrimony, to Edward Troy Perot, to Edward Troy Perot. Troy, will you please repeat after me? I call on all those persons present, I call on all those persons present, to witness that I, to witness that I, Edward Troy Perot, Edward Troy Perot, do take you, do take you, Roger Lewis Sanderson, Roger Lewis Sanderson, to be my lawful wedded husband, to be my lawful wedded husband. Roger, I call on all those persons present, I call on all those persons present, to witness that I, to witness that I, Roger Lewis Sanderson, Roger Lewis Anderson, do take you, do take you, Edward Troy Perot, Edward Troy Perot, to be my lawful wedded husband, to be my lawful wedded husband. And what token of love do you offer your beloved? <coughs> May these rings be blessed as a symbol of an affectionate unity. These two lives are now joined in one unbroken circle. Wherever they go, may they always return to one another in their togetherness. May these two find in each other the love which all married couples yearn. May they grow in understanding and in compassion. May the home which they established together be such a place of sanctuary that many will find there a friend. May these rings on their fingers symbolize the touch of the spirit of love in the heart. Troy, in placing this ring on Roger's finger, repeat after me. Roger. Roger. I give you this ring. I give you this ring <coughs> as a pledge of my love. As a pledge of my love and the symbol of our unity. And the symbol of our unity. <laughs> <laughs>
symbol of our unity. And it's a symbol of our unity. I, James Robert Colbert, by virtue, powers, virtue, vested in me by the marriage act, do hereby pronounce you Edward Troy Perot and Roger Lewis Sanders to be legally married. Congratulations. You may kiss you. Oh, <laughs> 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 